All right, friends, welcome to another 4Runner tutorial video. Today we're going to be replacing the brake pads on this 2006 Toyota 4Runner. It's actually a fairly simple process, something you can do at home with the right tools. So we're going to show you how to do that right now. Now we're actually going to be working on the rear brake pads today. And so let me show you the tools that you're going to be using. Now, again, we're gonna show you some necessary tools, also some tools to make the job easier. So first thing you're really gonna need is a 17 millimeter socket set. And this is gonna work the main screw that holds the caliper onto the disc and the brake pads. You're gonna need a big screwdriver and this is just to use for leverage. You may need a rubber mallet to bang out those screws that are in back of the, uh, the caliper that can be really tight sometimes. You're also gonna need a C-clamp, and we're gonna show you this is kind of something special that can really be used to make the job easier. And then you're gonna need either your tire iron or a four-way to get the lug nuts off of your rim and your wheel to get the, that tire off. Or if you do have access to a pneumatic gun with an air compressor, this is gonna make life amazing. Now today we're gonna to be using these Duralast Gold brake pads. And again, really do the research uh, either online or I'll put some links in the Amazon description box below where you can pick these up uh, on Amazon. And really we do suggest getting a really high quality brake pad. And this is gonna really last a lot longer for you and really make sure you don't have to do this job uh, all that often. All right, those are the basic tools that you need. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so obviously we're gonna to need to lift up the rear wheels in order to get the wheel off and access those brake pads. So again, what you're gonna need is one of these hydraulic jacks. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place that right underneath the rear transfer case here and just jack it up a couple inches off of the ground. So what we did is we put these orange jack stands right underneath the rear axle, just on the inside of the wheels. And again, all you need is a couple inches of clearance. Now really be safe with this part, folks, because you do not want this car coming down on you. Really make sure you're using the right tools for this job. All right, once we have the jacks in place, then you can go ahead and get those wheels off. Okay, the wheels actually came off really easy, again, with our pneumatic air gun. Again, if you don't have this, you are going to have to use a little bit of extra pressure to really get into those lug nuts and get them off. But again, once it's off, all you need to do is go ahead and give a little heel kick to loosen that tire and then roll it right off, put it off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, my friend Rick here help me out with this specific procedure so I can film. Now, Rick, what are you doing right here? I'm just compressing the cylinder and the caliper so that when we get it, take it off it'll slide right off the off the rotor and all I'm doing is I put the screwdriver in between the caliper and this outside pad and I'm just pulling out and then you'll see the caliper will slide back and forth now so we know it's nice and loose um, then we go in and I'm gonna break these nuts here there's this there's a nut here and there's another one down on the bottom right down here these two nuts we're going to take out to remove the caliper itself. Um, sometimes these can be really unf <laughs> unfriendly, so we're just going to use a mallet to break them loose. Oops. Once you have these loose, we're just going to crank on them and get them out. There's a little boot that sits right in between here. Once the threads have cleared the caliper here, you can just slide the bolt right off. It'll pull right out. There's one of your bolts. We'll do the same to the top. Okay, so once those two bolts are out, again, I'm going to use some gloves just to keep my hands from getting dirty. I'm just grab that caliper and we're just going to, it's held on by your little hose here. So I'm just going to put that off to the side. Again, you don't want to put too much weight on this hose, but we're just going to let that rest in the back there. And now we can go after these pads. Okay, so we now have access to both of our pads. They're held in by a couple of little clips. These are actually supposed to be silver, so you can see how dirty and old these are. What you can do though is get your screwdriver again. We're gonna put it right in between the pad and the rotor. And if you just give a little bit of pressure there, these old ones will pop right out. Now again, you can see how thin these are compared to the new ones that we'll show you here in a second. So you're gonna get the, the both the pad out and then obviously these old clips. And they just pop out pretty easy. They're using your screwdriver. Just kind of give them a little bump there. 
or you can usually prime out with your fingers. So there's one pad with some clips here and then obviously another one on the back. Remember when you're working with the one on the back, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get to just because you have uh, a little bit less room to see kind of things. But again, the pad will pop out pretty easy and then you can get those clips on either side as well. Here's one right here and then we'll grab that other one down below. I'm just grabbing those little tabs and kind of jiggling them loose. So there you go. The old pads are now out. We're ready to put the new ones in place. They come wrapped up to one set in each piece of paper and the, the brake pads are face to face. This is the back of the pad. You just open them up and you can see the significant difference between the old and the new and how much these old ones were worn. So the new pads are going to come with some new clips. And so what I'm going to do, they're actually very specific for where you need to put them in. So as you can see, this tab is kind of on the outside here. That means this is going to go on our upper one. What we're going to do is get a different style that is opposite of this to go on the bottom. So once you have these clips in, basically we have this back little thing that's going to need to curl around the back side of that area there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these without my gloves on to get a little bit extra uh, leverage here is I'm just going to push this into place and then you may need to use your screwdriver to get that clip on the outer edge shoved into that area. Alright so here's what it looks like when it's in place. We had to use the screwdriver to manipulate it a little bit. Again if you don't have these in place the brake pad is not going to set right so you really do need to take the time to make sure these clips are in place. Let's put the bottom one in so you can see that process. So I pushed it down in this, and as I pushed it in, you can hear it kind of clip over the back. I'm going to use the screwdriver just to make sure it's seated all the way in, because that'll make this, the brake pad go in easier. And I'm just bumping, and bumping the screwdriver to make sure it's all the way seated. Okay, so we've got these first two clips in on the front side. What I'm gonna do is go in on the back side now. This is gonna be used for the bottom of our pad, and then we'll, we'll get another one in on the top. Okay, here's a look from the top. You can see that the clip is in on that side and, it, and it's mirrored on this left side as well. Again, I'm sorry for the lighting, but uh, you can kind of see it resting in that. All right, let's go ahead and get the top one. Okay, now to get the caliper back on, what you wanna do is compress the cylinder down so that it's flush down here. The easiest way to do this is to actually take one of your old brake pads and we're just gonna push this onto the cylinder and then we're gonna take a C-clamp. Remember I showed you that C-clamp at the beginning? This is again that extra little bonus tool you can use. And we're gonna clamp it around like this and just twist down on that top. I'm gonna to need a couple of hands to do this obviously. And what we're looking for is that uh, the cylinder to get flush down here. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you kind of what it looks like once we get this on. Okay. I'm just gonna twist down on this until that cylinder is flush and we'll show you what that looks like here in just a sec. And you don't have to use a whole lot of pressure to twist that cylinder down. Oops. Careful not to let that fall. Pull off the C-clamp and the old brake pad and as you can see that cylinder is now flush. Okay so once you have that cylinder flush we're just gonna set this aside and we're gonna put our brake pads in. All right, so we're gonna put the back brake pad in first. Again, you're gonna have the pad to the rotor with this little half moon section on just like this. And what you're gonna do, we're gonna kinda of do this and then we'll show you how we do it on the front. It's a little bit more difficult on the back, again, just because you have to seat it a little bit blind, but it's gonna kinda of come in on this. So I'm gonna put this in and we'll show you exactly what we did up front here. Okay, so that's the first brake pad in there. You can see it's nice up and flush against the rotor. Again, that took a little bit of finagling, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes you have to bang it around with a screwdriver a little bit just to make sure it gets seated correctly. Let me show you exactly what we did on the front here where you can see a little bit easier. And I'm gonna use the screwdriver just to pry it down in a little bit. And there we go. So there you go, it's nice and seated and flush. Again, it's a little bit tricky on the backside just because you can't see. But once you have those flush, it's time to put the caliper back on. 
So the reason we wanted to push that cylinder down is because the cylinder was fitted for the old brake pads which are really thin. You need to push that down so it can fit over the brand new pads which are much thicker. Once you have that in place, we're gonna line up the little boots that are on the back side of there with those holes, and we're gonna stick the, the two bolts back through those holes, back through the boots. You're gonna have to use a little bit of pressure right there to get it through that boot, and then get it started on the threads. So you wanna make sure you get them both in before you start tightening them up too much, because you gotta be able to move the caliper around to get it. And with these, you just wanna get them really nice and hand tight. Uh, again, it was really difficult for us to get off without a rubber mallet last time, probably because uh, they used a machine to tighten them down previously. Or they just rusted in place or corroded. Okay, friends, that is the entire process. We're gonna put our wheel back on now and tighten it down with our pneumatic gun. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and after that, go ahead and get over onto the other side and do the same thing to the other rear brake. I hope this has helped. If it has, would you guys hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing because we have a lot more 400 tutorial videos coming up real soon. Thanks so much for watching.